It's time for Windows Weekly with Paul Theron, episode 178. Finally, we can remove the gag. Paul can talk about Windows Phone 7. He even picks his favorite Windows phone. It's all coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Theron, episode 178, recorded October 14th, 2010. The best Windows phone. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Ford and the voice activated Ford Sync. Featuring true hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more information, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. And by GoToAssist Express. If you're in tech support, save time and money by supporting your clients and colleagues remotely with GoToAssist Express. For a free 30-day trial, visit GoToAssist.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers everything that goes on in that beautiful area we know as Redmond, Washington, and points south, actually. I think we'll have a story from Silicon Valley this day. Joining us to talk about what's happening with Microsoft, Mr. Paul Therott. He's the editor-in-chief of the super site for Windows at winsupersite.com, news editor for Windows IT Pro, author of many fine volumes, including Windows Phone Secrets, which will be out soon, mm -hmm. and uh, Windows 7 Secrets. Hey, Paul. How are you, sir? I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's going. Busy fighting the Taliban in northern I, Afghanistan when you interrupted me. I we appreciate Paul. Maybe maybe people don't know this, but Paul uh, Moonlights is a uh, uh, operator for a Predator drone. Uh, he has. <laughs> That's right. Apparently, you can just do this from home. It's like SETI. Yeah. You can use your own computer and. Well, I think I'm convinced stuff. it's not. This is a spoiler. I probably shouldn't say this. If you haven't read Editor's Game, don't don't listen to the next little bit. But I'm convinced, mm -hmm. in fact, that we are fighting a war, that these these games, Medal of Honor, Call of Duty... Are, are training us. No, no, they're actually connected. Oh, they are the game. They're, they're, sorry, right, Ender's Game. Yeah, they're yeah. actually connected. And you, in right. fact, are. And when you get blown up... Leo, you know what? If that's true, yeah. we're kicking ass. Yeah, that's I'm what I'm awesome saying. These games. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that would, be, that would be good news. They probably... I'm thinking they probably have some sort of vetting thing that's going it's being sent back yeah to you know this they call it xbox live but really right. it's going straightly straight to a, a mclean okay. va where uh, analysts are, are carefully watching mm -hmm. and as you res, as you achieve this 11th prestige right they say okay not make this he's guy ready. live he's ready he's ready to go live i am ready i wish they would take me live this would be a fantastic premise for a movie or a book. Maybe somebody like, I don't know, Orson Scott Card should, should, should write it write up. Write a yeah. book. Let's, let's recommend that. Do you feel Medal of Honor is the hot new game, isn't it, right now? Yeah. Yeah. It's good? It is good. You know, I had, um, it, it came out on, it must have been Tuesday, and I, I came home from New York on Tuesday from the Windows phone launch, expecting it to be there when I arrived, and it wasn't. Oh. And, you know, I, I think... Uh, UPS delivered it at about 7, 10 p.m. It was the latest oh. ever, you know. So, jonesing for this game, I decided to see what other people had written about it. I usually actually don't do that. And I was actually sort of surprised. You know, IGN noted a lot of reliability problems and a lot of bugs and a lot of, um, you know, kind of weirdnesses that I actually haven't noticed uh, at all. And I'm wondering if they, they meaning the game maker, hadn't, released an update that fixed some of these issues because there isn't, you know, as is the case often with Xbox games these days, you know, the second you plug it into your computer, you know, into the console for the first Before time. Before you can play it. Yeah, it says there's an update for this game, you know. Yeah. Um, that was one of those things. I'm sure we talked about this on the podcast. Microsoft assured me years ago they this would never be used for this purpose, but <laughs> it, it is used. What's wrong with used, using it for that purpose? Any Well, because you don't want to set up a system where, Developers know they can release something buggy and just, just fix it uh, later. You know? But everyone who plays the Xbox 360 knows, almost without exception, the first time you plug in a new game, it could come out that day, and there will be an update waiting for it every single time. You know, 
this is very common. So my experience with it has been quite positive. Good. Yeah. Multiplayer and, and single player. It's a, it's a great game. We will take uh, chat room questions later in the show, something we've started doing. But uh, already John has, I think, a very good question. If Call of Duty or Medal of Honor is training people for war in the Middle East... What is left? What is, what is left for dead doing? <laughs> oh well, obviously for the pending zombie apocalypse. Oh, of course. Yeah. Paul got the right answer, by the way. <laughs> no, this is important training. <laughs> it's more likely that we're going to be attacked by zombies than be attacked by the Covenant. So I actually think there's some value to yeah, that. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Logically speaking, Leo, well, that the dead it? would reanimate is far more likely than aliens. Yeah. Is it really? You think? No. <laughs> and so Tom Weber says, well, and then what's Angry Birds training us for? And obviously the pigopolis, pigopolis, pig, the pig apocalypse, the, the, the pig apocalypse, the pig yeah. apocalypse, when the pigs shall conquer the earth. Sure. That's yeah, a classic tale of the downtrodden. I got up very early, I must say, for me, Monday morning. Uh, yeah, Microsoft, I heard that. Yeah, for some reason, Microsoft decided, even though they are, in fact, a West Coast company. That which, the, by the way, leads me to one of my biggest pet peeves ever with Windows. What's that? Which is that when you install it, the default time zone is Pacific. Oh, wouldn't you hate it, though, much far more if it mm -hmm. were Cupertino? Because <laughs> all, Apple products, okay. all right. Apple products start in Cupertino. Okay, well, I, Microsoft's doing the same thing. They don't I, do I just, Redmond, though. They do Pacific. The, it, right, okay, that's true. Cupertino's a little solipsistic. yes. A little? <laughs> a little. Doesn't everybody <laughs> live in Cupertino? Uh, everyone is anyone, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, Anywho, so you got up really early. Yes. I got up really early, and we did live, live coverage. I was, you know, I felt I owed this yeah. uh, to Microsoft because we've done it so many times with the iPhone. And uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. I think very kindly, despite setting a, the abs a terrible time for this, at least did stream the video so we could run the video yes. and I could do my little... You know, Mystery Science Theater 3000, mm -hmm. sit sit in front of the video and make snarky comments during it. Um, I, never, I never do that myself. I had hoped sure. I had hoped that we would be able to get you on. And I, yeah, you were, I'm sorry you were, that didn't work out. That's fine. You know, but here, here's something for you. Yes. I talked to them about this, and it was uh, recommended to me that next time we could do live video right from the event. Really? And uh, yeah, this was a, someone actually explicitly sought me out and said, "Hey, we know Leo's doing this thing, and you, you know, next time you should bring a, bring Deal. a camera, you know, Delio. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you, Microsoft. And it's com contra compare and contrast to Apple's. Oh, I listen. <laughs> there was a moment uh, during the keynote uh, or during that uh, demo where Joe Belfiore couldn't get the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. to work, mm -hmm. and uh, he said, "You know what?" I know I, I trust this thing. I'm going to do it again. I know there's a lot of people in the audience who have Wi-Fi and 3G going, but screw it. I'm going to I'm going to. Try I was it. impressed, and it worked. And it totally worked. Yeah. And I leaned over, and I, I happened to be sitting next to Mary Jo Foley, and I said to her, "I said, compare and contrast his reaction to this to that of Steve Jobs under similar conditions. Right. You know, where he basically said, temper tantrum. If you guys don't shut off your things, I'm just I'm just going to leave. I could just leave. You want me to leave? Temper tantrum. You know, I mean, that's a completely different, completely different way of handling the same same issue. You know. Yeah. So what did you think? Uh, you know, oh, more importantly, what did you think? All right, I'm gonna tell you what I think now. Uh, I really, uh, which is by the way not more important, but I will tell you since you ask. <laughs> well, you no, never no, have I, to ask I, me I, twice I, what I think. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and I will say this: that I really don't like to review a phone unless I've spent two or three weeks with it. I really don't think even the, you know a couple of days is enough. You really have to walk a mile uh, in its SIM card and really this live. Is be my, my greatest strength. Because you will, you will know I'm more than anybody. Thing. Yeah, I would not to be a jerk about it, but yeah, yeah. Sure. And I saw, by the way, I saw uh, your pick, and I have to say, I think I agree with you. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, for the phone of because there's nine models he showed. I mean, now yeah, come I mean, on, so cheesy, for me, cheesy they're... though, cheesy though. And the, Apple would have never done this. The little hatch <laughs> opens, and the table goes. Mm, kind of. Oh, by the way, that that was terrible. Mm, and that, it's not even terrible. steady, and it's in, mm, uh, and it comes out, and then listen, it kind of sits there and vibrates. The, 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 the Glockenspiel in Munich had better technology. <laughs> that was in it. terrible. So the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. But, okay. And then he's done, and then you and see then the hatch again. open, and it goes. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, but see, it's like the doors on the old Star Trek. There actually was a guy behind there who had opened the door. Did you see it when they brought it out again? There was actually a you goober see down the there. Guy. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's so bad.
<laughs> okay. But aside from that, let's not. Let's I, not. I, uh, I, no, let's no, not I, I don't want to realize that. Presentation. So I, of course, the, and and we knew a lot about this phone, and it, you know, it's the Metro interface. If you've used a Zoom HD, it's you know, you've used it basically. It's very similar, and uh, you know, there's the tiles, and I think beautiful. But the the thing, and I tweeted this, and this is. Not having used it, I really won't have an opinion on the phone until I've used it. But one yep. thing I notice, and I think this is probably very conscious, um, iPhone, and because the Android is basically a copy of the iPhone, um, mm -hmm. are so app-specific that the op it's the operating it's, it's more like a desktop environment where the operating system is uh, there for service, but it sits back while the apps run. And so the UI for the iPhone and the UI for the Android phone are primarily the app UIs. When you get into the app, that's your UI. And it really yep. struck me that Microsoft... Um, is really putting their OS very much forefront. It almost is like a feature phone in the mm -hmm. sense that your most of your interactions are with the phone's OS. I think ultimately most of them won't be, but I, I do see what you're saying. I, I, I think a lot of them are. I, I think what they did was they looked at what at the activities that one would undertake on a phone and said, okay, well, which of these can we turn into these integrated experiences? Exactly. You know, pitch, pictures being the obvious one there. And maybe it's because, you know, I mean, Apple's an OS company. Apple could have done this too, but yeah. I, there are a couple of reasons I, I think this is the case. First of all, they were very wise to say, look, we're not, we can't be an app-centric phone because we have 2,000 apps compared to 250,000 apps. We, we, we'll have apps, but we cannot be app-centric. And they also said, and well, I think this was telling, I, I, that they are data-centric. That's data like egg thing, by the way. I, I'm just, no, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I don't think that... I don't think the thought was, we're not going to have as many apps as Apple, so let's approach it from a different direction. It was more like, let's look at what people are really doing with these phones, and where can we make it better? You well, know? yeah, they made a it, virtue it, out of a necessity, though. Well, I, that may be a happy circumstance. I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't think it was because they weren't going to be able to match Apple with apps. I think if you look at Android, you see a situation where they, they don't have as many apps, but they have as many of the right apps. And I think that's all you need to have. And I think that's what uh, Microsoft is going to have. That there's no doubt. Uh, well, yeah, I, yes, uh, absolutely. I think that the, the, the spin that uh, Microsoft, there's two spins I thought were very interesting. Mm -hmm. One is we're data centric, not app centric. Yeah. We're focused on your data and dis and displaying it in an appropriate way. And it's a user centric, but yeah, it's okay. user centric. Yeah, but that's the same thing, right? Yep. Uh, uh, and secondly, we want you to get in, get what you want, and get out. We don't want you living in the phone. And all their ads are people, you know, walking to trees because yeah. they're staring at their phone, which I think is not aiming at the app focused iPhone right. user, but aiming at the feature phone people. user. People. And anyone who's seen one of these jerks walking down the street in New York with his head in his phone and not wanting to be that guy. But I would <laughs> you know? submit that's uh, who's buying these. I mean, smartphones are yeah. being sold to people who want to want to be engaged with the phone. I, and we should be very clear, you know, what they're really advertising is something that is a unique feature of Windows Phone, but on the other hand, the reason that someone has their head stuck in a phone is because there's something interesting going on in an <laughs> app. And, it's compelling. And, and that stuff is absolutely on Windows Phone too. Okay. So it's not that Windows Phone doesn't do that. It's that Windows Phone does do that, but they also do this other thing. So, for example, in and I'll just give some simple examples. In the calendar app that's on the iPhone, you can get a little number on the icon that will show you how many, uh, I don't know what it shows you, whatever the pending appointments or something, but no other information. Whereas on the, the start screen of the Windows Phone, you can actually see the next appointment, the name, where it is, the times, like lots that. of information. Yeah. Glance and go. Yeah. It's nice. Because 90% of the time, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. What's next? Now, if you want to dive into calendar to look at something further down the road, yeah, at that point, it would work just like it does on the iPhone. And that's fine. You know. But the idea here is that they're showing where they can, as much as they can, glanceable information. And that's not available on the iPhone, except in fairly meaningless ways. I mean, you can see that you have something coming up on your calendar, perhaps, on the iPhone. That's something, but it's not you know, as, as much as is available, say, on Windows Phone. So having, having said that, I think that my prediction is that the success or failure of this phone is really going to come down to how much people like this Metro interface because you cannot get away from it, right? So yeah. uh, if it wears well, it's going to do well, and if it doesn't, it's going to be a problem because you're kind of... Yeah, it's oh. very, very foreground, isn't it? More so than iOS. Well, I guess is. so. But you know, I guess, so. What? But what's comparable to Metro on the iPhone? It, this it's a grid of icons. You know, nothing. That's in, right. It's kind of, but it's kind so, of transparent. In many ways, that Metro UI has is 
I mean, we don't know how it's going to perform in the market, but I mean, I'm just talking aesthetically or technically or whatever. Uh, it's already superior to the UI on the iPhone. Uh, you know? No, well, I would say it's superior in the same way that a Louis the Fourteenth is superior to us to us. Uh, a stickney or something. It's 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 highly engineered. It's very foregrounded. The the OS is foregrounded. About that, you know, I, I, it's interesting that you see it that way. I Microsoft specifically, if you if you look at the way they talk about this, they actually say exactly the opposite. That we get out of the way. This, yeah, OS is designed to get out of the way. But that's not really the case because what you see is this very very aggressive color palette. But what and you see is your tiles. Data. Yeah, but you see your data. Palette, no, but. The color palette as defined by you, the icons as defined by you, well, see in that? The order okay. and arrangement defined by you. So that's the and unknown then, for me is how much customizing I can do, how much yeah, I can it's make actually it look. pretty excellent. And okay. there's a lot of dynamic stuff going on, little animations that aren't, aren't just there to be frou-frou, but are actually there doing something. And also things that are customized so that, you know, the, the tile for the pictures hub is a double wide tile because it's nice looking and, you know, we'll have is customized with a photo of yours, you know. Uh, makes it more personal. Um, if your wife or brother or best friend is important to you, you can have a tile for those people right there on the on the start screen. You don't have to dive into an application or the phone interface or the contacts list to go find their stuff or you know send them a text message or whatever. They can be up front and and center. And th there are hokey demos you can do around this, but I, I think to me, and again, having used this now for about four months. As my literally as my phone. That's where you have a huge advantage over us. Yeah, yeah. I can say that in my, I mean, I love this thing. My my only uh, little issue along the way for the first you know three quarters of this was, I got I do miss some things. I miss being able to stand in line and play a crossword puzzle app or whatever, um, or read a book on my Kindle app or whatever it is. You know, uh, some things that were just niceties of the iPhone platform and are also available on Android. Because those things are more mature and they're out in the market and, you know, people can write apps. Now, over the past couple of weeks, these apps are really appearing. There are eight or more Xbox Live titles available in the marketplace. There are somewhere around 2,000 different applications. And all of a sudden, it's, it's already, it's, we're still weeks, I mean, several weeks in, in the U.S. case, um, ahead of the initial launch. And that is already, it's fixed. It's, it's over. It's, it, we're done. I mean, it's it's fine. It, all of a sudden, it's I don't want to say it's perfect. Nothing's perfect, but I have never ever, including with the iPhone four and and its beautiful uh, you know high resolution screen and all that stuff, ever thought, oh man, you know I missed this or I missed that or whatever. Aside from just general availability of apps, and now that's gone. And I uh, I'd have to say it holds up really well. That's great and news. I, that's really important. Yeah. I think. So and, and I and so I say this with just this is uh, without even using it. So that's I understand. And, and what you're yeah. telling me is that what what I see uh, in all the demos, this very f uh, foreground Metro UI, really can take a back seat once you have apps on there. It's it, and can be customized it, and all it, of that. I think it takes a back see. Th there's a there's one tough thing about Windows Phone from a selling it to people standpoint, and that is anyone can look at the screen and say, okay, that looks good or doesn't look good or whatever, and you know, the performance is great or whatever, and you, you know, okay, so you use it, and you kind of get the whole thing. But where Windows Phone really comes alive, and, and again, this is going to make it a, a tough sell in some cases, is when you have your stuff on it. And I think the coolest thing about Windows Phone is, and it does require a little bit of work up front, is that by logging on to this thing with your Windows Live ID, all of a sudden, you get automatic access to all of this stuff and it populates with all of your stuff. It populates with your photos from online services, your friends and family photos from online services like Windows Live and Facebook and Flickr and whatever else you've configured through Windows Live. It obviously your email and your contacts and your calendar stuff all kind of comes in automatically. And it, what it turns this thing into is a very personalized experience. It's really, I, I, obviously on any phone you have accounts and you log into your accounts. You know, when I set up my Android phone, obviously you set up a Gmail account and it does your calendar and your contacts and all this stuff. And Okay, so that works sort of this, the same. I mean, this is to me a good thing because I don't, once I log into my accounts, I'm done customizing in many ways, right? Yeah. But if you take a little bit of time, I'm going to write this up as the, the initial part of my review for Windows Phone and also, by the way, the first chapter of the book I wrote about Windows Phone is about what you do before you get the phone. 
you know, and with a little bit of oh, work. Oh, that's a very good. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Now, it, it, what's interesting there about was, this, In other words, talk, pre prepping your Gmail account or whatever for yeah, prepping your phone time. Your, your online mm. services in a way mm -hmm. so that you can you could literally, in many cases, with one log on, have all your stuff on the I, phone. Oh, I want to read this article. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about it a little bit later because it's my uh, that's fan, week. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. And it's it, yeah. I know this because this is I, I kind of do this ad, ad hoc on the radio show because people are often saying I'm getting my first smartphone. How do right. I sync my Outlook stuff? And I, and, and I go through time, this process with them. Yeah, I, I had not really encountered the need for such a thing, you know, previously with, um, you know, with computers, obviously, because we don't have this. I think we're going to head there, by the way, I think eventually uh, whether it's in windows 8 or in the future i think eventually that the future of this stuff is optionally you could log on to windows with your windows live id right instead of creating some stupid little local account and that by doing this you get a connection with all of these things you might have configured uh, across your computers you now imagine you get the ability to um, have all your documents automatically synced down to that pc when you log on for the first time all of your settings for applications like your dictionary for microsoft word your contacts, you know, for uh, Windows Live Mail or whatever, your uh, favorites for IE, all the different things that could be associated with your Windows Live ID and, and have, I mean, I have to think, certainly will be in the future. Um, this is all happening on the phone already. I, I don't understand why it's not on the PC, but I, you know, I think it will be. Um, there's some interesting stuff, but I, I think that was the one thing that struck me working with Windows Phone early on compared to, say, the iPhone, you know, because the iPhone is more of an ad hoc thing, you know, Obviously, you could have a mobile me account and log on and get all your stuff automatically. And it does that for Gmail. And it does it now for, uh, for Hotmail, right? Because Hotmail does um, ex exchange active sync. But that's just those three things, right? Calendar, uh, contacts, and email. Now, beyond that, if you wanted to do something like, well, I want to I use Facebook on my iPhone. Okay, well, you know, you download the Facebook app and then you, in the app you log on. Um, I want to do you know, Amazon stuff. You download an Amazon app. In the app, you log on. You know, you do it kind of on an app, a per app basis. I think one of the neat things about what Microsoft's done is that you can configure this stuff up in the web, a lot of it, through your Windows Live account, and then just have it appear on the phone automatically mm, without like having to log on again later. It's 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 not. This is where they have an advantage with Windows Live of of all of the integration that goes on on the web with Windows Live. And actually, interestingly, uh, very similar to what you said earlier, in some ways driven by necessity. You know, Microsoft created a lot of these Windows Live services a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But then what it's seen is people are using WordPress, not Windows Live Spaces. Right. People are using Facebook, not whatever stupid thing they had, groups and events or whatever. You know, people are using Google Search, people are using, you know, whatever it is. You know, people are using Flickr or Google Picasso Web and not their own. You know, this is a uh, situation Microsoft's not used to. <laughs> right, but so being number two back, in some cases. <laughs> yeah, so I would say about 18 months ago, you know, with the previous rev of the Windows Live online services, they said, okay, look, let's just be real about this. Yeah. We have hundreds of millions of people using Windows, billion people using Windows, whatever it is, hundreds of millions of people using Windows Live, but millions and millions of people using these other services. So rather than pretending we can, we're going to compete with all of them, Good. Uh, let's let them yes. work through Windows yes. Live as well. So Windows Live becomes yes. the center. And when you just look at it from a PC perspective, it makes some sense. But when you add the phone and the Xbox and the Zoom yeah. stuff and it all comes together into this one beautiful thing, this is ultimately the, the big picture thing for Windows Phone, I think, right? Because Xbox Live by itself is awesome, but people love to play games on phones. It's great. You know, the Zoom stuff is really good, even though the Zoom devices have never sold well. But the actual platform is awesome. And I think it's something that people are going to discover when they move to Windows Phone. It, really, really good. But then when you tie in all this other stuff, you know, Facebook and over time, Twitter is going to be in there and MySpace and, and LinkedIn and, and all the other stuff, Flickr, whatever. Um, you know, it, it, it's very interesting and very powerful, I think. And I think it's something that, again, it's a hard thing to show people, you know, when it's not their own stuff, because anyone can load up a phone. No, it with has photos. to be yours. Yeah, yeah, it has to it be has, yours. When you yeah. see it's yours, and that was the thing I... Months and months ago, I don't know if it was May or whenever that was, that I went to the Microsoft campus. You know, they hand you these demo phones and you play around with their stuff. And I took pictures and made videos and I made notes and all this stuff. And then finally, I blew one of the things away and I logged in with my Windows Live account. And then you see the stuff comes on and you're like, I can't Ooh. believe 
awesome this is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so automatic and instant and amazing. And it really is. It's amazing. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about the, because uh, there are nine mm -hmm. phones. And, uh, yeah. and you blogged. Uh, you had your favorite. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to talk about the different models and so forth and which one you think okay. is going to be good. And I guess you can now reveal what you've had all along. Is, is it, was it an LG or a Samsung that you had all along? Well, I had a, a Samsung prototype. That was the, the it was it's not the one that we're going to buy, not but it, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't reveal the ones that I have now. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. what I can tell you is my preferences and I can tell you I I've, I've I've spent time with all of them. So Oh, good. Uh, we're going to get some I've expertise. I've spent a lot of time with here. some of them. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, uh Don't yeah, say, I, don't I'm, say. We're going to tease. Okay. Coming up. <laughs> Paul will explain. It's yeah, well, a very I, special episode. It is a very special. <laughs> Paul will explain why you. Well, this is what I want to know is which one to buy. Yep, I can answer that very easily. Yeah, and I think I might agree as with what you As far as I'm say. concerned, there literally is one choice. But, oh, I'm excited. Well, I, and we'll talk about why there are so many models because I think there's, a, there's some interesting thinking behind this. But before we do that, let's mention our friends at Citrix and go to Assist Express if you are in the IT or support business. You need to know about this product. There are many uh, choices out there for remote support, and I think I don't have to explain to you why the ability to do remote support is great. You don't have to walk down the hall or travel across country. You don't have to spend time on the phone with your <laughs> with your client saying, okay, okay, no, 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 not the, not the control panel. No, no, it's in the managed. You don't want to have to do that. You, what you'd like to do is reach your hand out into that computer and fix it for them, and that's what GoToAssist Express does. It is, uh, because it's from Citrix, the easiest to use, the easiest to set up, the fastest. It's cross-platform, Mac or PC. You can support a Mac from a PC and vice versa. Uh, it's really designed for small businesses and professionals su to support clients. So it has features that pros want, eight sessions at the same time, for instance. So you can start an install or a scan, move on, move on, move on. You waste no time. You can do unattended support. You don't have to wait for your clients to be there. But, but I think this is really a killer feature. I know I've used it. Your clients don't have to have anything installed ahead of time. They're on the phone saying, help. And you say, no problem. And you, you say, go to gotoassist.com and enter in a ticket number. And go to assist installs the software. This is all transparent to the clients. You know, it says, would you like me to install the software? Yes. I think you have a little Java certificate. You say, allow. And, it's, and it literally, within a minute, you're in their system. So that is huge. I, and and uh, it is f kind of gratifying when you could do that and your client goes, wow. And you fix the problem real fast. You can drag and drop fixes, hot fixes, uh, from, or, or patches, or, or whatever, from your computer to the client's computer. You can even, I don't know how much you'd use this, but I think it's a neat idea. You can even show them your computer. So you could say, this is what it's supposed to look like. What's it look like on you? You know, you, you could say, this is the normal thing, or whatever. You can, you can let them see what you're doing as well. Um, it does allow you to see what operating system is running, exact version and everything, what security software, everything running in the background. Go to Assist Express users are saying they're getting a 40% increase in productivity when they support people using Go to Assist Express. That's like getting two extra work days a week. Uh, think what that does to your bottom line. You will be a support hero. Very affordable. You can get a month pass or a, or a day pass. So if you're doing this all the time, you know, the months pass, but if you only do it once in a while, just get a day pass. Go to assist.com slash windows. Go to Assist Express. It's, it's updated. It's better than ever. If you've tried it before, try it again. Free, free for the next 30 days. Go to assist.com slash windows. We thank them for their support of uh, Windows Weekly. I think they've picked this show. They've pinpointed this show as a good place for them to advertise because they know there are a lot of support pros and, and hardcore geeks who, uh, who listen to this show. So I have already committed to buying a Windows phone because, as I said, you gotta you, you got to use something for a couple of weeks to really get it. You've used it for months, yep. and you've used them all now. Mm -hmm. Which one did uh, – this is actually a great question from Havard. Which one – did you notice a preponderance of any particular model at Microsoft, like one that they really liked? Yes. <laughs> ah. yes, I, yes, I did. You did. Can you reveal that? Sure. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's the same yes, one I you can. like. It is the same one. So there I seems like, to yeah. be a consensus about which model is the best. It is almost universal, uh, with hmm. one exception. So, um, yeah, it's a Samsung Focus. This is the, and, it's an AMOLED 4-inch screen. Right. Not the biggest. There's a 4.3 over at T-Mobile. It's the not HD the biggest, two. but it's the biggest on AT&T. Yep. 
It has, it's that AMOLED, you know, Beautiful. I, the screen is unbelievable. Aren't those spectacular? Yeah. There's something about it, Leo, too, when you touch the, the glass and the screen. I don't know how to explain this, but it's so smooth. I, it is the smartphone equivalent of a ThinkPad keyboard. It's perfect. Mm. The, the screen is perfect. It is Ooh. beautiful. It is uh, everything. Anyone who has ever lusted after a gadget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is drool. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> It is the thinnest of the Windows phones, mm -hmm. and it is super thin, uh, beautiful thin, really nice. Do you? Can you have uh, one there? You can. Uh, you can hold it. Uh, we need to. Can't wait a can't. week before I can show you what I have okay. <laughs> yeah, That's with fine. me. But uh, but we'll take it. Take your word on this. Uh, now, what uh, they did was interesting. They have nine models, and they obviously they had they have two models: the Dell, and mm -hmm. uh, another one with a slide out keyboard. Yep. Yeah. They have. I mean, it's kind of like the Android space, with an exception. There are uh, yeah. there are nine models, but they all have the same processor, the same screen resolution, the same five meg. Microsoft obviously has a hardware reference platform. Right, right. And, and one of the things this this has been fascinating to me. I have to tell you, there was a. Uh, I've had a few weeks of doubt about one aspect of this system, which was that. You know, I had this. I've had this prototype device, and it's running a. It's still running a pre-release version of Windows Phone, which I actually find a little valuable right now because I want to compare mm. and see what's changed. Because one of the things I want to document is, you know, what's changed since I wrote the book. By the mm. way, one of the best things that changed, uh, this is completely off topic, I apologize, but I think it's very important to communicate this, is in the pre-release version of Windows Phone that was given out to developers, you know, in July or whatever, you could enable a Facebook account and it would bring over your, you know, your Facebook feeds and your contacts and your something else, your photos, maybe. I can't remember what the other stuff was, but it was all or nothing. There was Ooh. no way to configure it at all. So now in my case, I have over 1,500 people that are, you know, friends of mine on Facebook. It would, and because of the way the People Hub works, uh, which is the, you know, the contacts list, it became unmanageable, mm -hmm. you know. You would scroll through this unbelievable huge list of people to try to find somebody. You know, my brother's name is Jonathan. I think I had 31 Jonathans. <laughs> That's not good. You know, in the list. It's crazy. Yeah, it's not good. So one of the things they've, because of, you know, that problem, one of the things they added was for contacts from Facebook, you can only display information from Facebook for the people that are already in one of your other contact lists. So in my case, what it does is it turns off all the people that I don't actually know. It's beautiful. Um, so that that's a, a neat change. So I've been looking for these changes, but one of the, the biggest change and the, maybe the most important change is, you know, a few weeks back, some of the first games started appearing. So, I, of course, I download these things immediately. Mm. We joked around about some of the pitfalls of doing that. <laughs> you yes, know, you got one game that did nothing, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Microsoft found that to be very humorous, by the way. But <laughs> did anyway, you tell them about that? No, they, they told me about it. They, they laughed. They mocked you. Uh, more people, a lot of these guys apparently listen to the podcast, which I find vaguely alarming. But <laughs> yeah, me you do. What about you know, me? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny how often people mention that to me. But anywho, um, these games, you know, the performance wasn't great. And you could actually almost feel the thing winding up because you would start a game and you would tap the screen to move a piece around or whatever it was, and there would be a pause, and then it would eventually kick in. Right. And then what would happen is over time as you played the game, it would kind of ramp up and then it would be okay. And I thought to myself, you know, this is going to be a disaster. And even during the, even during the keynote or during the demo when Joe Belfiore was on stage, there was a moment where he showed off some of the games. And one of the comments he made really... Uh, alarmed me because he said, I'm actually going to switch between different phones because I don't want to wait for these games to start up. And I thought uh, to myself, oh my God, you know, what if this thing isn't as oh, fast as is required bad. to play these kind of games they've been advertising? But then you get on to the, the final phone and, oh my God, it, this thing is so fast. It is night and day to the prototype. It's mm. amazing. Mm. So this Snapdragon processor that's in these things is absolutely astonishing. Um, it's become, by the way, a gigahertz is now the bottom limit of well, what a phone it's should the have. Well, it's what you the baseline, have. but, but for, the, for high-end smartphones, yeah. I mean, yeah. for, uh, you know, what some people like to call super phones or whatever. But. There are still phones with seven and 800 megahertz processors, and it's like, what, don't, no, stop, no. Yeah. No, this thing uh, combined with the graphics uh, processor that's in there is, uh, it's astonishing. 
Um, so they all have that, right? They all have, uh, obviously, the interface stuff. They all have at least a 5 megapixel camera. That's one of the baselines. Um, I think 8 gigs of storage is the minimum, if I'm not mistaken, has to be on board. Um, and, you know, a bunch of It looks of like others. there's some with 8 and some with 16, right? Yeah, so I was interested to see that on AT&T, two of the phones, and they're the two that are, that are not the Samsung Focus, both come with 16 gigabytes of storage. Right. Which I think, I would say, for anyone who has an appreciable media collection and, you know, wants to sync content to the phone, that's probably where you want to be at least, right? Yeah. 16 or higher. And I had decided, even with the 8 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte limit that is in the Focus, that I would put up with that because uh, I think the prototype I have also has 8 gigs of storage. And you kind of learn to live with that from a music and video standpoint or whatever because the other stuff is more important. But actually, the, the Samsung Focus has an advantage over the other two AT&T phones from a storage perspective because the storage is actually expandable. And this is uh, not well understood. It's not available on every Windows phone. In fact, Microsoft completely incorrectly communicated to this this to me repeatedly before the launch, but um, the fact is you can actually expand the storage of a Windows phone if it's supported by the device using a, a micro SD card. It's not swappable, so it's not, it's not like removable storage. So that was, uh, somebody wrote, sent me an article that said this is not removable. I, I don't understand that. So it's an SD card, but you can't take it out? Yeah, so imagine uh, you have an Android phone and you pop an, a micro SD card in it. Yeah. And then you go to install an application. I believe you actually get a choice. You, you know, where do you want to install the application? That's good. Like that. So, no, no, but that's on Android. Now, if oh. you and if you have data, you could you could pop the micro SD card into your computer and copy music over to it, and then it would um, you know it would play on 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 Android. That's not how it works on Windows Phone. You can swap it out. So if you have no micro SD card in a supported phone, or if you have a, a you know an eight gig card or something, and you want to go up higher, uh, you can swap it out up to thirty two gigs, um, but not on the fly. And it, what the way it works is, if you swap it out, a it will complain until you put it back. Huh. Uh, B if you want to use a new card, or uh, you don't have you've never had a card, you put a new card in, you have to reset the device. It erases everything. And the reason is the, the phone manages it as if it were internal memory and it combines it with internal memory. You can't pop it out later and pop it in your PC and copy content back and forth. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it literally becomes internal memory when you do it. So it's expandable on some phones, but not removable. I mean, obviously, physically, you could remove it. Um, on the phones that do implement this, by the way, it has to be under the battery cover, um, you know, the, the cover that exposes the battery because they don't want people to pop them in and out by mistake or on purpose as you would on another type of phone. It's not designed to work that way. But what this means is that the Samsung Focus, even though it only comes with 8 gigs of storage, can actually be expanded to 40 gigs of storage. Hmm. And that becomes very interesting because uh, at that point, I, I, personally, that means I could fit my entire media collection on there. And then this becomes that one device I could bring around. It does 720p video. Uh, it has a five megapixel camera. It's got the best display. It's the thinnest. This it, the thing is so light, you think it's a fake demo unit when you pick it up. You know that has the fake screen on it. You know that this couldn't possibly be the phone. I mean, it almost it feels like it's going to lift into the air like a hot air balloon. It's so light. <laughs> it's it's crazy how light it is. I want one now. Yeah, it really is beautiful. Well, soon November eighth, right? Yeah. So that's the first one that's coming out. You remember a few? I don't know if it was a month ago or so. I said November eight would be. You were right. Uh, that's it. Well, sort of. I mean, it's the, it's the first one. The other two HD, uh, I'm sorry, other two AT&T phones are coming a few weeks after that. So I can get the Focus first. Good. Right. The, be the best one is coming Good. right out of the That's the interesting. Gate. Yeah. I think. That's my personal favorite. Now, the, I mentioned there was an exception. Um, there are people out there who are fans of the current HTC HD2, I think it's called, right? Which is the That's one the biggest system. one. That's the 4.3. Yeah. Now, the, the, the one that'll be on T-Mobile. Yeah, I, there were some people who felt like this was superior just for the screen size. And, you know, it's very similar to me to that Android, uh, the Android phones, the bigger like Android phones. It's like the Evo like the, or the Droid X, which I carry. Droid X, exactly. Yeah. And some people are turned off by those big screens, you know, because they have smaller hands or whatever it right. might be. And that's completely understandable. But I, I think if there, are, if there are happy Windows Mobile users on this earth, and there could be a few... Um, I, they certainly all have that HTC device. 
and this is the sort of a successor to that you know sort of a right it doesn't exactly look exactly like it but it's um you know similar from a form factor perspective and honestly it's it's big differentiator from the other ones is simply the screen and then the fact that it's on t-mobile not on at&t yeah, I, I don't want AT&T. That's the only thing that worries me, although this will be very telling. I've mentioned this before to see if AT&T sucks as bad on Windows Mobile as it does on iPhone. Just phone, first of all. <laughs> and then it doesn't. It doesn't. And see, that I think if, if that's the case, then, then then we know that the problem is not no, I, AT&T, it's the been, iPhone. It's been a dawning realization of mine over the past several months that... Um, oh, you've already got the experience. You know. Apparently, I'm getting a call on this phone that I can't... Discuss. So um, you're saying, well, you're saying, well, I want to get this very crystal yeah. clear in the words of Richard M. Nixon. Yes, sir. You're saying you are on AT&T with two phones, an iPhone, do you have an iPhone 4 or 3GS? I've had every iPhone except for the iPhone 4. So 3GS. Yep. And you're comparing this to some unnamed phone, which could be the Samsung. No, I'm comparing it to the Samsung prototype. Prototype. Using the, by the way, using... The AT&T SIM, so it's the SIM from the iPhone. Taking the SIM out of it, and it works Take better. It oh, you, you drop fewer calls. Way, until, the, until the night before the Windows Phone launch, I had never dropped a call on Windows Phone in, four, in well, in that three and a half months of use. And the reason I dropped a call was I was in New York City in a cab driving between buildings. You know how horrible uh, AT&T can be in New York City. Um, but it was the first time, and, it, and by the way, totally true story, I'm I was talking to my wife, and the call dropped, and it was confusing to me because I don't drop calls anymore, right. and I kind of had to look at it like, what was that? You know, are you this, still there? This never going? happens on Windows Mobile. Unlike on the iPhone, I was able to call her back immediately. You know, one mm. of the weird things on the iPhone is when the call drops, yeah. you, you have to you you whatever. Like dead. I call her yeah. back, and she says, "Are you using your iPhone again?" Oh, wow! <laughs> That's what she said. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so um, at least the story of one is that uh, mm -hmm. Windows Mobile is. Uh, is so I guess not it's not. I'm not saying it's scientific. No, uh, but I'll, but I'll, I'll have the same. Experience. And I'm in a very bad AT and T area. That's I have to say my reluctance. I love that the, the, that Samsung. What is it? The Focus. Focus. So here's what I would recommend to to you if it, if it continues to be bad, you are obviously then a candidate for one of those in home wireless yeah. extenders. Right. I mean, maybe that would be the thing to the, do. The micro cell. Yeah. <clears throat> Never. I think but, we're all. I think the future <laughs> of this wireless stuff is literally going to be personal micro cells that are you're going to have in a car. Everyone's going to have one in their house. You know, I, I think that's how it's going to go, and then we're all going to die of cancer. <laughs> but at least we'll have good we'll cells. Good cells. So there's a focus. I'm, I, and uh, can I pre-order now on AT and T? You know. I asked about that, and I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I'm just going to have to wait in line on November 8th. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's the one to get. You know, the other two, it's it's funny. They they, they have a business. In fact, when Balmer was talking about them, he said, yeah. for business, there's this one. For people who love media, there's the focus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to say, I, the HTC Surround, which is the one with the speaker. Well, that's the one. Yeah, that's dumb. Someone was going on and on about how it was so surprising how good this thing sounds. Surround yeah, yeah. sound speaker in my phone, I really? Think I, I think it's crap, personally. I don't, I, I don't get it. I didn't think it sounded good at all. You know, it slides out a little bit. You think it's a keyboard. So the phone is super thick, right? Because right. it's like a... I noticed like a it. I'm looking at it. In fact, in our broadcast, I said, boy, that's a thick phone. They yeah, must, they I'm, must I'm, have a I'm keyboard. Find, i got to find my notes on this because the, you know, what was the <laughs> the point of the other one? Yeah, no one knows. It was just, a, the other one's just like a phone. He showed <laughs> the, like, the, the uh, yeah, the other one, no, the other one has a slide out keyboard, right? Was it the Dell? Oh, hardware keyboard. That's what hardware it was. Hardware keyboard. The LG, the LG Quantum. It was the, the LG. Hardware. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, if there are people that want the hardware keyboard, and I guess they're still out there, then that's the point of the LG. Every one of these things has a point. Right. You know, the the point of the Samsung Focus, I believe, is to, you know, be the best one. <laughs> so that's the one I like. I mean, <laughs> no, I, mean, not... I, I don't even know what else. I, I don't know how else to say. Is it, it. the it's screen? Just, is that what it is? Is it the screen it, is so the much better? The screen is gorgeous. Yeah. The the industrial design is awesome. Yeah. It is so thin and so light. All right, I'm getting it. And it's expandable. It's beautiful. Now, let me yeah. ask you this, because this is a huge problem on the Android uh, phones. The yeah. carriers customize them to the point where uh, they're just not the same phone. Uh, right. Is there that kind of carrier customization? Have you seen any T-Mobile phones? Do they look different? 
I guess there is no. some because AT and T is going to put UVerse on theirs, and T Mobile is going to put their TV solution on theirs. Right, but uh, you know this actually works very similarly to how it works in Windows Seven today, okay. which is that you can't replace the UI with your own UI. And when you look at customizable elements, which in the case of Windows Seven on the desktop would be the items that are in the Start menu and the icons that are on the desktop, uh, and also the you know the buttons that are on the taskbar. The the analog on Windows Phone obviously is that Start screen, and there are certain elements to the Start screen that can't be changed. You know the top two icons uh, or tiles have to always be the Microsoft tiles. Uh, beyond and then uh, you know the the OEM the the wireless operator has the opportunity to customize the next two rows. And uh, interestingly, a lot of them aren't even doing that. A lot of them are just taking one of the two rows because they actually think that the Microsoft choices are, are so good that people are going to want those. And so what you're seeing is not a situation where, you know, HTC can blow away the whole UI with their own Sense UI, but rather uh, applications that are on tiles that users can remove so you're never yeah. stuck yeah you can always make it look just like the microsoft experience and now, it, well they all but they all look the same i mean if you go to windowsphone.com and you look at the phone side by side this you know each of them has what looks like kind of a fake screen on them but actually those are very representative of the screens as the, the default screens and you know from at&t for example for most of these phones you know the top four icons which are you know phone and people and uh, an email account, the initial email account you um, you set up, and then the messaging icon. Those are actually those are from Microsoft. That's how they specify it, and that's exactly what's on the phones. You know that that's how they look. What about the Dell? Uh, the Dell now, uh, and Gadget had a leaked picture yeah, of a new on, Dell, yeah. the uh, the Lightning. I, you know, I, I have you I seen that from, one? Yeah. So from a design perspective, I think it looks kind of neat. But even when that thing was leaked, you know those the slider type phones where it's uh, vertically oriented. Both Dells are sliders. Yeah. I've just never, right, so they have a ruggedized one and then they have the, um, what's the cool looking one called? The Lightning. Uh, Lightning, yeah. I mean, it, I think it's nice looking and I think there's a, there's that crowd of people who, you know, uh, they had a, a Blackberry maybe or a Motorola Q or whatever it might be and for that kind of vertical phone where you, it's um, very Ooh. tiny keys and you do the thumb tapping and whatnot. Right. I think obviously that, that this is what it targets. It's not for me personally, but yeah, I understand. You, if you want to do the one-handed typing, the BlackBerry style one-handed typing, then you're going to want mm -hmm. this phone. But otherwise, you think the Samsung. I'm going to order the Samsung. It's very clear to me the Samsung. It, now, how's typing on the uh, on the Windows? Oh, it's this, it's setup? fantastic. In fact, I think if you watch that demo, you know one of the great things he did was yeah, that was pretty cool. Rip, he rip was fast, it, right? Yeah. And that was completely off the top of his. I mean. Uh, and that's how it works, and that's what's neat about it. And I think that's the benefit of them coming at this a couple of years later, frankly, if you yes. want to just make lemonade out of the situation. Yes. Which is you can see the mistakes that Apple made with their keyboard and not make those mistakes, you know, essentially. Yeah. So uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not going to be writing an article on any of these phones or a book or anything like that, but... Yeah, you know it's it's uh, it's fine, and I and for whatever it's worth, I'm, I don't I shouldn't dump on Apple. Actually, I think the virtual keyboard exp experience on the iPhone is as pretty much as as good as it can be anyway. Uh, but they have a nice uh, they have a learning system in there uh, where you can add words. You know, I happen to, I might as someone who writes about technology or something might use words that aren't going to be in the default dictionary. It's very easy to add those words and uh, and have it learn the types of mistakes you make and have it always autocorrect so that if you you know type in T H R for the it, and correct it to the it will know the next time you do that to make that correction automatically and it's it is funny it's hard to watch as you're typing it yourself but if you type and make mistakes on every single word in a row as you hit space to go to the next word it, it's correcting right behind you mm -hmm. so you could you know tap 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 and you tap out this sentence. You made a mistake in every single word, and then you look back at it, and it's all been corrected, and it's exactly right. And it doesn't happen that that way every single time. But actually, I'd be curious. I'm sure someone will test this. There'll be those, you know, people that will, uh, you know, type the the same sentences on each phone, and they'll, you know, try to come to some understanding of which one's better. I I think that the virtual keyboard experience on Windows Phone is fantastic. So I think it's going to be, it's going to be right up there. I think if if not number one. Uh, 
you know, compared to Android and, and iPhone, certainly. All right, enough good news. You, you're kind of making me a little nervous <laughs> because uh, you're, never, so awesome. you're never this happy. <laughs> I'm a little Sorry. worried. Uh, so there is, <laughs> there, is some, there is some bad news. Yeah. Uh, there is? Windows Live Spaces and Live Mesh Beta shutting down in March. Oh, yeah. So That's not bad news. I'm moving trying. off of Windows Phone briefly. We'll, we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back. We'll come, we'll come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I got, I got these emails from Microsoft, as did many others. You know, the, one of the big questions was, uh, with Windows Live Spaces moving over to WordPress, a.k.a. shutting down, <laughs> and Live Mesh Beta, i.e. The, the predecessor to today's Windows Live Mesh. Yes. Um, you know, these are also uh, going to shut down at some point. You know, when 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 would this happen? And actually, both of them are going to shut down sometime in March. It's actually different dates in March, but uh, both of them are shutting down in March. So if you have a Windows Live Space, Spaces blog, and you log in today and haven't done so in a while, you know, you'll see a notification that we're moving to WordPress and you can change now. But if, if you don't change before... March, they're just going to change it for you at some point. And there's a lot of stuff up on the web about, uh, you know, what you can do now if you want to make the transition. And unfortunately, all of the features of Windows Live Spaces are not available on WordPress. So if you're using some of those custom, you know, Windows Live Spaces modules, uh, they're not going to be available on WordPress. You're going to have to figure out, you know, how to make that transition. And then, you know, the Live Mesh beta, you know, Live Mesh is something I used for years. It was in perpetual beta for the entire time it was there. You know, Raphael and I used it to uh, work on the Windows Perfect for a book. 7 Secrets book yeah. together. We're, we're fantastic. But Microsoft has moved to Windows Live Mesh as part of Windows Live Essentials, also replacing Windows Live Sync. So, you know, if you're still in the old Live Mesh beta, which, you know, actually still includes some functionality that's not available in Windows Live Mesh, like color coded, uh, coded folders and um, that web desktop and so forth. Well, that's going to shut down too. So, there's no there's no way to install Windows Live Mesh and just have it replace Live Mesh, which I think would have been kind of a nice thing to do. Unfortunately, what you need to do is you'll you'll uninstall Live Mesh Beta. All of those colored folders will turn into normal folders, and then you install Windows Live Mesh, and then you have to manually go and re-sync the folders. Now you can you don't have to move your folders, right? I mean they're they're still there. And if they're still the same on all your PCs, I mean, they'll just sync right up and you'll be back up and running. But it's a little bit of a manual process. And again, if you, you know, want to do this before March, and you should, um, Microsoft has instructions on the web and you'll, you'll get an email. So if you've been using Live Mesh Beta or Windows Live Spaces, Microsoft should have already contacted you and, um, you know, get you going. So, so uh, back, to, back to Windows Mobile. Uh <laughs> yeah. How's the battery life on that Windows phone? I'm looking at the talk times and the standby times. They're looking pretty long. They're awesome. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Moving on. Awesome. Item three. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just it's, stick in it. It's awesome. You can, uh, you can, uh, it's, well, let's see. Let me see if I can think of something to complain about. No, don't. It's okay. No, no. There's, it's there. No, I had no. a meeting with the Office Mobile folks, and I complained about a few things there. You know, there's a, there's a really nice SharePoint integration feature. And there's no really nice Windows Live SkyDrive integration feature, which I find kind of odd, um, for example. Hmm. So there's that, there's that negative. There's <laughs> you the, really had a stretch for that one. There's, um, <laughs> there's no tethering, right? But Although they'll be adding that. No support um, for XP? No, actually, uh, no, there is support for XP. Okay. Um, I'm trying. No support for Mac? Nope, there's support for Mac, too. Okay. Yep. <laughs> So uh, I was kind of shocked. I didn't expect this. I'm, uh, we're in the middle of a security now on Wednesday, yesterday. Yep. And uh, Eileen comes running in and says uh, they're streaming something uh, live from uh, the Microsoft uh, Silicon Valley campus. Uh, it looks like yep. Mark Zuckerberg's there. And I went, right. what's going on? Could it be the unholy alliance? No, not really. Not really. But it's uh, interesting. They're taking baby steps, you know. Bing, yeah. Bing is going to incorporate Facebook data into its search for social search. Yeah, and I, it took me a while to understand what this even meant. You know, it's the type of thing where you you read what they tell you, and then at the end of it, you don't understand what you just read, and you go back. And not not because it's too technical, but because it doesn't make sense. You know, yeah. but uh, my my understanding of this because it still hasn't been enabled for me, and I guess it's going to happen over the course of this week, is that 
if you 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 go to Facebook and you log in, you know, so you, you're logged in. Mm -hmm. I was doing and, that and it got black, so I'll I'll come back. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, and then you go to Bing and you search for something. One of the things that can come up is information about the thing you searched for uh, that's, that relates to whether your friends on Facebook have liked the thing or whatever. So, for example, one of the things that people will do is, I want to go see this movie. Right. Whatever. Saw 29 or whatever's coming out this holiday season. Uh, I wonder if it's any good, you know. And if you think about it, this, this isn't necessarily a great example because I know people are going to hear this and think, well, this is not a hard thing to search for. But you have to sort of think like the search engine. You know, you go, you don't go in and, you can't go to Google.com and type in, will I like Saw right. 29? <laughs> you know, it doesn't have any understanding of you, but you can search for reviews. Your concerns about a movie or an item you might buy may be different than those of the reviewer, right? So you have to sort of parse what you're reading with the understanding that this thing he's complaining about isn't important to me, so this review isn't necessarily valid, or this thing he never mentioned is important to me, thus this review is not valid, or whatever it is. So in the case of a movie, for example, if friends of yours on Facebook have liked the item, as you can on Facebook, you know, Facebook actually has a, a like infrastructure, if you will, right? Um, that stuff will actually appear in your search results. And that is akin to saying, will I like this movie? Well, people who are friends of yours like this movie or don't like this movie, maybe. And that gives you some more information, you know, for making that decision, which is what this is all about. Now... Obviously, you have to be on Facebook for this to work. You have to be logged into Facebook. And I should point out, you have to have friends. So it's not going to be useful for all of you. <laughs> no wonder nothing's <laughs> showing up. All right, now I understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's technology, Leo. It's, it's, um, <sighs> but it puts a social element into Bing. And, and I think more important going forward, uh, there will be further integration of Facebook and Bing, but also I think further integration of Bing with other social networking services where this kind of stuff will all be surfaced in kind of a, an interesting way, maybe, you know, so we have to kind of wait and see on this one. It, uh, it looks like it could be interesting. It, it's that it's Facebook personalization that, that the kind of thing they're doing already with Pandora and Yelp, uh, they're going to basically do with Bing. Mm -hmm. So, 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 uh, and, and, you know, the privacy concerns that were expressed at the, uh, at the press conference, Mark oh, yeah. Zuckerberg responded, well, it's not, it's, it's not anything you couldn't see if you just went to Facebook. It's based on what your privacy settings are. So if you're yeah. publishing your, you know, this stuff to everyone, then they can see it in the search. And if you're not, they won't. Right. And actually, if you, one thing, I guess, to look at in Facebook, and God help you anytime you have to go into those Yeah, settings. good luck. Yeah. But one thing to look at, if you have 27 hours to kill or whatever it is, um, your information could be showing up in Bing search results when other people search for things. So you want to... You know, think if, about if that. they're your friend, if you're their if friend. Your friend. Yeah. Right, 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 right. If or if it's public. Right. Well, and I make that. Yes, you get you. Actually, that's the point is you get to control yep. it. So you can set any bit of data to everyone, friends of friends, friends only or even, I guess, nobody. And yep. uh, and if you've set yeah, it for so everyone, it's going to show up for everyone. It's going to show up for Joe Blow. And, and, you know, maybe you want that. Maybe you don't. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, you get to choose. I don't think it's such a bad thing. They reassured everybody that no information is traveling from Bing back to Facebook. That could be a cause for concern if Facebook is logging your searches in some way. But it's, right. they say we're not. Uh, and I presume they wouldn't say it if they were, you know, because it's ver verifiable. So they know. Um, you know, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting because we talked about it on This Week in Google yesterday because it's uh, Facebook adding. It's social graph to Bing's search, which and everybody's been talking about social search. And, you know, search by itself is not enough. You want to you want to add information to the search using your social graph, but but meanwhile, Google is moving to the next thing, mm -hmm. which is location. They they took Marissa Meyer uh, out of the search. You know, she's like one of the top people at, yeah. at Google, and it looked like a demotion if you looked at it first. She was in charge of search, and oh. now she's in charge of mobile and location. But that's yeah. where that that's the most that's important thing to Google, actually, right? Yeah. yeah. And Facebook's no, doing a little of that. location-based search is huge. It's yeah. not a, it, you know, if you search for a movie from your phone, right. and by the way, Windows Phone does this as well. A Windows Phone is an excellent system. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, <laughs> no, you know, If you're really? out and about and you, <laughs> you search, you know, one of the things that comes up is, you know, some understanding of your, where you are. Did you want to go see a movie where you are? Right. Uh, right, not just uh, reviews or whatever it is, you know. The way location is integrated in is very important, and I can't wait to see how... Uh, 
how Windows Phone does it, because I think it's it's highly relevant. It's uh, awesome. <laughs> since the phone knows where you are. It does, yeah. <sighs> okay, so um, Office 2011 uh, oh. arriving on the Macintosh. Yeah. However, bad you know, news. I, <laughs> I, I have a weird interaction with, you know, people from companies that have a new product and, I feel like sometimes I ask questions that I, not because I'm like I'm smart, but I it 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 strikes me how often they're confused that I'm asking this question because they don't actually have an answer for it. You know, these people right. like to be prepared. You know, so the first question that comes to my mind, well, actually, it's the second question that comes to my mind when I hear that Outlook or Microsoft is making Outlook again for the Mac. Uh, the first question is why. <laughs> you know, I don't actually understand the point of that, but. Um, once we get past that, the second one is, okay, so you're making Outlook for the Mac. Clearly, you will allow uh, Outlook Mac users to integrate with all your Hotmail stuff like we can on Windows. So if you want to use Outlook on the Mac, uh, you can access your Hotmail-based email and contacts and That's, calendar. That seems sensible, yeah. Seems sensible, you know, yeah. through Outlook as you would with sure, Interchange. Sure, of course you would. Because after all, you know, yeah. most people using a Mac Absolutely. are consumer types. And maybe they have a Windows Live account and they have a Hotmail account or whatever. There are only 365 million of them. I mean, yeah. surely. Some surely, of them might. Surely you support that. Surely. It's your own product and stuff. <laughs> yes. And they don't. No. Yeah. How very odd. So then my third question was, well, but you're, you're going to, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, okay, you don't have it now. That's fine. But surely by Christmas or. Surely. February or something. Surely you would. Yeah, they did not. No. Hmm. Okay. So hmm. right now it's uh, huh. it's sort of aimed at exchange, I guess. And hmm. you can obviously use POP3 Hotmail access if you want to pretend it's 1989 again. <laughs> but there is no way to access your, your calendar and contacts from Hotmail. I, I, and that is bizarre. It's just the craziest thing I've ever... They're just pushing people to Google. Yeah, they really are. I mean, it's the dumbest... I, I, I just don't even understand that. Yeah. So... Anyway, that's what there they're doing. There you have it. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Wah, wah, wah. As the church lady would say. Yeah. Very interesting. On the other hand, the good news for Mac users, as we alluded to earlier, is that um, you will be able to... We, we talked about this in the podcast. In fact, we talked about this months ago. I, I was intrigued this week to see Microsoft sort of confirm this and then botch it. You know, some guy, I guess, said on Twitter that they were going to release a Zoom client for oh, the yeah. Mac. Yeah. What, yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. you about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not true. So we had said this on the podcast I think months ago. Um, Microsoft is uh, going to release a Mac, Sync Client for the Mac. Sync you know, Client. That's not the Zoom Marketplace. No. Okay. No. But, you know, Windows Phone, one of the things to remember is very, very much uh, oriented toward on-phone usage of everything, you know, online usage. And with the exception of media, right? Because uh, video is heavy. You don't want to, you don't want someone to download a, a movie rental to their phone over their 3G network yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. blow away their 200 megabyte monthly right. limit or what. Right. Um, so they don't offer that. But so you need some kind of a PC sync for, for media. You need a way to get photos that you took with the phone right. off of the phone right. onto your computer, whether it's a Mac or a PC. Right. And you need a way to get your playlists and your videos you don't need itunes you don't need the zoom marketplace but you need some way to, to need move some way to something now, stuff around obviously on a mac people are using itunes and they're using iphoto and whatnot sure. so um windows phone is not going to support protected content right if you rent a movie from itunes you're not going to be able to play that on a windows phone obviously but if you've taken the time to rip cd content or you bought music from itunes or um, you know, you have music videos that would probably be unprotected or podcasts or, you know, stuff like that. Photos, photo collection. There's going to be a way. So there'll be more information about that coming soon. But it's not, it's not, I just, I'm talking about this openly because we already talked. We, 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 talk, we knew this months ago. This is not, to us, this is not new information. But unfortunately, I've seen so many, it, it's depressing to me after I've already debunked this to get news alerts. Zoom coming to Mac. Right. You know, no. No, 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 no. Well, I'm glad you could clarify. So, so, so something is coming, just yeah. not the Zoom marketplace. Right. It's and will it Zoom come with at the same time as the phone? 
Uh, uh, yeah, there'll be something. Because otherwise, I, you know, that's going to, I mean, I figured yeah. I'll Wi-Fi sync everything anyway. I mean, that's one of the nice things about Windows Phone 7 is it Wi-Fi syncs. Well, yeah, actually, you know, that's a good point. So, uh, how much can he, he's deciding how much he can say, folks, just so you know. He knows <laughs> all of yeah, this. Yeah, I don't know about that. On I don't know. About he doesn't that. know what he can say. I don't know about that on the Mac. Okay. But, uh, yeah, there'll be more information soon. Let's soon. Just, let's we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although I, I do run Windows. I'm not saying I don't, but uh, mostly I use I, And I do have a Mac. I'm not saying I no, don't. No, I know. Though. I know that. I try to, you know, I don't like to promote it. No. Well, yeah. I'm like God knows they get enough promotion. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I hear they're You know, they're doing fun. one, like, little, the they're doing a little event, not even a big yeah. event, a little event, because it's a town hall uh, in Cupertino at One Infinite Loop, which is, holds 250, well, 300 people on next yeah. Wednesday. And it's like, oh, my God, what could Apple have okay. next? I wasn't going to address this topic, but I, I to. want to tell you something, and I mean this honestly. Okay. I am excited about this event. <laughs> no, I am. I am. I, I feel like... <laughs> and I had to really I'm ducking the why. tomatoes. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. Um, when I got into this industry, when I, as a younger man, a young guy, a kid or whatever, coming up, um, I didn't think of it this way explicitly, but it was this Apple event that caused me to think of this. The thing that made me excited about technology wasn't like a toaster that could do something special. It was a computer because a computer can do all this different stuff. You know, it's, it's a multifunction device. And I think that the thing that's exciting about the Mac and the PC, it's the same thing, right? It's their PCs, essentially, their computers. And, and when you look at smartphones like Windows Phone or Android or iPhone, you know, there are many computers in a way, right? They run applications. They, they're multifunction devices. They don't just do one thing, you know? I mean, iPods are very interesting. Airport Expresses are kind of interesting. But, you know, they do one thing, essentially. You know, they're, they do this thing. And, and they're, they're nice for what they are, but they're not the be-all, end-all, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's this multifunction stuff. I felt bad over the past few years that Apple has put the Mac on the back burner. Um, they explicitly said this when, I think it was when Leopard, or actually it was before Leopard came out, they said, you know, we're going to slow down, right? We've, you know, it took us a while to ramp up OS X, but with, I think it was with Leopard, they said, development of this thing is going to slow down. And then I think it was shortly after that, around the same time, you know, they started talking about the iPhone and, a lot of people were saying, well, of course, you know, they're bringing people over from the Mac OS 10 to work on the iPhone, and that's why, or whatever the reason. I, I felt bad that there hasn't been anything going on there. I, I think that even us on the Windows side owe Apple a great deal for what they do on the Mac because it pushes Microsoft um, to do more with Windows, and maybe they would otherwise, you know. And I think it's very healthy, and, I, and I'm glad to see them do this because, uh, you know, as their other stuff has become more successful... You know, I just feel like they've kind of, you know, been going through the motions, you know. Here's a Mac with the new processor, and, uh, you know. Uh, it, I, I'm, I want to see them do stuff on the software side. I, I love the OS stuff, so uh, I'm, I'm very inter I'm interested in it, like I would be in, you know, uh, Windows 8, which will be happening soon, and, you know, Windows Phone 7, which, by the way, is an excellent mobile operating system. Um, you know, this stuff is interesting to me, so I, I like the multifunction stuff, I guess, is the way I would put it. I'm wondering. Okay. I'm wondering if they're going to do. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll we'll see. You I know to everyone's break. wondering, but that's the beauty of it. You know, yeah. Yeah. are they going to go to a 3D spatial OS? You know, no. They're going to really like here's the new Finder, and it's going to look exactly the same. My, if I were, yeah, obviously it's Lion, uh, which is apparently what they're yeah. going to call 10.7. Uh, right. There, there is the rumor uh, that this Meerkat, is chat, like I was hoping for. Meerkat would have been great. Uh, there is uh, the strong rumor, and I think it's probably true, that there's some key feature in Lion that makes it worth looking at. Because, frankly, Apple's in the same boat Microsoft is. Operating systems are kind of cooked. They're kind of done. Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, the, uh, it's no leopard. Uh, by the way, and another, Windows 7 were incrementally it, it, upgrades. It's another reason that Windows Phone 7 is so interesting. They completely screwed up the last thing. It's something new. Yeah. You know, Windows 7, the desktop version of Windows, as good as it is, is Windows, right? I mean, it's got a start button and a start menu and a taskbar yeah, and a desktop yeah, and Windows. And yeah, I mean, they've made some evolutionary stuff going on. But I mean, it's, come on. If you use Windows XP, you, you, right. you will immediately understand this thing. It's not like it's anything different. Um, yeah, I hope they really push it because I want to see, I, I, need, I need the desktop stuff to 
you know, <laughs> go down that same path that the phones did. You know, Microsoft did this a little while, for, for a little while, when they had the tablet stuff going on. It's kind of a side project. They had the media center stuff right. going on as kind of a side project. And then I think logically enough, they brought it all into Windows. It makes sense, but... Uh-oh. What? I'm My still here. Skype said, action required. Your auto recharge agreement will be canceled. Oh, okay. just ignore that. It actually turned off my video to tell me that. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean my free <laughs> Skype account isn't going to work? This might be a good time to go to the chat room and give them a chance to ask questions. I think we'd like to focus on Windows Phone 7 since it's the yep. only thing Paul cares about, unless you want to ask about Medal of Honor. So if you're in our chat room, uh, this is only, if obviously, while we're doing it live. You could go into our chat room uh, after the fact, but uh, we, we'll, we'll have moved on. So you know what the guys from Medal of Honor got right? What did they get? You know right? what they did right? What did they get right? They have single player and multiplayer achievements, which is awesome. But they also have, you know, every game basically, not every game, but a lot of games have these achievements where you finish a level and you get an achievement. Yeah. And, okay, neat. And you finish the game and you get an achievement, or you finish the game on a really hard version and you get another achievement. But I like the games where they have in level achievements, you know, that not only do you have to finish the level, but you have to do something in the level. And they have one for every level. So you don't just save the guys and destroy the town, you destroy a certain number of buildings in the town. And they have stuff like that in Medal of Honor. And I actually really like that. I think that the combination, it, it keeps you more engaged. So the combination of, um, I didn't say Live Mesh had XP support. I said that Windows Phone had XP support. Paul's now responding to the chat room. <laughs> Now that I look at that thing. Yes. Jerk. Thor. You're, pay attention, uh, Thor. Windows Live Mesh does not oh, have XP support. By the way, support. if you ask a question that Paul deems stupid, we will mock you. <laughs> That's right. That should that should stir uh, up some cotton. Some Windows, questions. Windows uh, uh, Zoom works on Windows XP. Thus, you could use a Windows phone with Windows. XP. <laughs> Couple of questions from the chat room. Will there be yes. uh, getting back to that Zoom? Oh, you did say this. Maybe you did. Mm -hmm. Did you say this? Getting back to the Zoom sync. Will it work with the Zoom HD? And actually, I want to add the question. Do you think the Zoom is dead? So no. Um, no, there's been some interesting stuff with the Zune. So you mean when you say Zune, obviously you mean the device. The right? Zune, Zune, yeah. Because this platform. is, I mean, this Windows Phone Seven is a Zune and a phone. Yeah, without sure. all the I storage. Mean, yeah, the Microsoft decided a few years back they were going to turn the Zune into a platform, and of course we all kind of chuckled. You know, uh -huh. this is so cute that you would do this uh -huh. because obviously your device strategy is not working. Right. But actually, you know, now that it's coming together, it's really cool. You know, one of the things I did at the Microsoft Open House event was use Connect the Xbox accessory to interact with the Zoom services over the Xbox 360. Ooh. Now, you could do that with your hands, you know, like, you know, you wave around a Oh, space yeah, they like, showed that. Yeah, majority right. report. It actually works. Yeah. It works. That works. And that's that's a little hokey, and I don't yeah. actually believe people are going to do that. No. But, you know, one of the things that's built into Connect is voice command, and that works great. And that's exactly how you want to, you know, uh, command your stereo system. If you're, you, you know, you're having a party and you walk by and some songs on you don't like and you want it to go to the next one. You don't want to fiddle around for a mouse or a controller or something. You could actually just walk by and say something to it and that would work and that, that works great. So, no, I, I, what Microsoft has done is they've released a, a minor update to the Zoom software to accommodate Windows Phone and some other, a couple of, a handful of new features. Um, there will be a major Zoom software release, you know, next year at some point. And I believe, and this is based purely on speculation, I believe a Windows Phone-based version of Zune. But for now, uh, the hardware that is, you know, the device. For now, they're sticking with the existing hardware, the Zune HD. You know, they have 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte versions. They've actually been releasing more apps and games uh, for the Zune HD lately, which is uh, sort of astonishing to me because they'd really let that sit still for a while. And I think their intention is to... And this is, again, speculation, but I, I think their intention is to uh, obviously get Windows Phone out of the gate, the phone, because it's important, and then to get going on the other accessory types, uh, products like a new Zune HD or whatever they may call it um, and other things. So, no, Zune, uh, Zune, Zune is a platform, if anything, is more... Uh, vibrant and alive right now than it's ever been. I mean, it, it's actually sort of astonishing what but, a turnaround. But, but I'm just thinking in terms of the hardware. Yeah. Well, they're not going to they're not going to release a new version of the Zune HD based on the current. They hardware. don't need to. There's no reason to do that. Would they continue uh, to make it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think so? Yeah. Okay. That's that's I guess the question. And and uh, will the Mac uh, syncing thing work with a Zune or is it just really for the phone? It's only for the phone. Okay. 
Uh, IE9 final. You got any idea about that? No, but Microsoft has a web-oriented conference every March called Mix, and that would be the logical time for that to happen. They're uh, pointing me to, Duncan pointed me to, uh, and Gadget has a hands-on on the Focus, so if you want to know more. Uh, well, every, anyone could have a hand-on on the Focus. They had them out publicly. I mean, that's, It looks like that's what they're doing. There's a Focus in someone's hand. Yeah, yeah. this is not, not <laughs> I mean, what I would I, call they, a review. They, you can see the bracket around it. That means they yeah. shot these at the Microsoft yeah. Open okay. Office event. No, you. You can do it. Sorry. You know, I hated the I mean, bloggers. <laughs> now, this, yeah. is, this is a direct side effect of the pressure to get Yep. clicks and i hate it because basically what you're seeing is a lot of sensationalistic there were, there were a thousand people that could have taken those yeah. pictures i mean hands a, on we got a hands yeah not really a big exclusive big you know deal um yeah let me know when you get a review <laughs> except well, it'll be next wednesday next wednesday yes, sir. that's yeah. when you can officially say okay good so yep. so next week we will have and by the way if you watch the show live you get it a little earlier because we do the show thursdays uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, if when I'm on time, which I was a little late this week, but and maybe next week because I have a board meeting. But 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC at live.twit.tv. So if you want to get a little bit before we release it, Paul will, I guess next week you will have a review, like detailed review. Yeah. yeah excellent. Uh, let's see. Can you mm -hmm. browse at the same time as you're talking to somebody on the phone? Asks. Saley 316. Yes, but only on AT&T. And T-Mobile. And but oh, if they do a, yeah, T-Mobile does it too. If if they do a Verizon or Sprint phone, this is a this is a limitation of CDMA. Although apparently Verizon's trying to fix that and yeah. I don't know that it's tied to LTE. I, I thought they were trying I, to fix it. LTE. I thought it was LTE, but and I read that same article where it said, well, we might be able to fix it with CDMA before LTE. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, um I yeah, think that has to yeah, do with the and, iPhone. That's all. Yeah. I don't uh, the, the, obviously, you can make a commercial very easily to explain where you would want to do this. But honestly, I don't think this actually comes up in real life a lot. That said, Windows Phone, like the iPhone, is smart enough with a proximity sensor and so forth that you, you know, you take the phone away from your head, the screen comes back on, you can interact with the uh, the on-screen stuff and, and go to a different application, run a web browser, browse the web, yes, data and voice at the same time. It does work. Um, yeah. Kipper... Not his real name. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend named Kipper, but go on. <laughs> really? Captain Kipper, actually. Oh, I, I don't mean, have a friend. Not, he's not a captain. <laughs> uh, wants to know how uh, cut and paste will be implemented when it comes along. Are they, how are they, yep. we, we know okay. it'll be in 2011. Uh, it's yep. not going to be with a shipping phone. <laughs> it's going to be very, very early in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I just have to tell you that I can't talk about it yet, okay. but um, it will be well done. Yes. Uh, Dunks. I Wednesday, think Wednesday, you know. Maybe okay. Wednesday you can talk about it? Stay, there'll be more to say. Oh, good. Uh, Dunks wants to know about the poster on the wall behind you. He says, is that the Brady <laughs> Bunch? What is that? So uh, looking at myself now and, and looking at it in the background, um, no, it's a poster from the wind. It's an internal Microsoft poster from when they were making Windows XP with Service Pack 2. And I don't know all the names of all the people off the top of my head, but from the top left, the guy with the white hair is Jim Alchin. The guy in the middle is Todd Wonky. Ah. And then I'd have to look. I actually don't know the other people's names, but I'll have to look. It says hackers, viruses, and worms. We're fighting back. And it's, you know, it's an advertisement for Windows XP Service Pack 2. Oh, those were the days, the naive, innocent days when they thought they had a handle on this. Well, Windows XP Service Pack 2 was obviously was a big improvement. They turned the firewall on. That's all well, they really, you know. There, there was a little more to it than that, Leo. But yes, it was, a <laughs> it was, it was like 90%. Yeah. Um, Good question from Web 4345. Cabling for Windows Phone 7. Um, is it a micro USB? How is the connection? Yeah, it's micro USB. There's a... <laughs> so, I don't understand the technical details of this, but you know that the EU has required or has asked mobile vendors to agree to, and all of them have, to a standard. And Yay. Hallelujah. This phone, it, this, I think part of the problem, though, is... You know, it's not like Zoom where you have this uh, single dock connector or the iPhone, right? right? So the the USB connector can be in a different place on each phone. It, it um, actually, I don't know if I can check. I, I haven't, I'm not going to do this right now, but I mean, I'm not sure if the connectors work between phones. I would imagine they do actually, but. Um, yeah, you know, you lose some stuff with micro, I mean, micro USB is nice. It's nice that you could use the same plug, I guess, but 
you also lose some stuff uh, as well. But what, what, what you yeah. mean functionality? Yeah, you know, one of the, uh, there, there's a reason Apple has a thirty pin dock. Thirty pin. I mean, there's, yeah. the, there's some very valuable things you can do there. Right. Um, that you, you know. Including send video. Yeah, you can actually send video over USB, um, but it requires wonky software and special right. cables and stuff. Right. Uh, we'll get one more question here. Um, lots of people want to talk to you. This is good. Uh, actually, one statement, Fopo Gijo says, uh, you know, we have a lot of Canadian viewers, that the <laughs> Zoom, Zoom Marketplace PC just got enabled for Canada. So yeah. that's, that's yeah, great yeah, yeah. news. Great news. Um, unlocked Windows Phone 7 devices mm -hmm. in the U.S. Any? Can you just buy mm -hmm. the hardware? Right. So I don't believe that the ones that have been announced so far ha are available unlocked, but there's nothing stopping that from happening. And I know that some of them are being sold unlocked outside of the United States. Yeah, they'd have to be, because I think some countries require that. Yeah. So what I was told about unlocked phones was that there's nothing stopping them from doing it. So it would be on a wireless carrier basis if they wanted to do that. Or a manufacturer who just said, I don't, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna... right. That's true, too. So, um, yeah, I think when I, it was probably about a year ago or more, I, I went to buy a Windows Mobile 6 5 phone. And the one that I ended up buying was a, a an Acer phone that you can't even buy in the U.S. And I bought it through one of those, you know, websites that's designed specifically right. for selling unlocked phones from around the world. And I would imagine there'd be all kinds of opportunities for that with Windows Phone. But there's nothing to prevent it. So, yeah, there's, it will happen, definitely. Great. Well, on one more. I can ask one more because this is a really good question from Rap. How was Microsoft getting video out of the device during the launch event? And is 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 it looked like... For instance, when he showed the PowerPoint, which was so cool, yeah. it looked like you could get video out of the phone uh, and of everything, unlike Android or rather uh, yep. Apple, where yep. you can only get some things. Is yeah, that the so, case? Yeah. The, the retail devices don't have that capability in the software. Um, it requires a software application. Uh, it requires a special build of the OS, and they use a special USB cable. Oh, okay. And, um, Do some of the phones have HDMI, mini HDMI? Any of them? Actually, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I think that they do actually. See, in that fact, would be the way to do it. I would. L I know my Droid X so, does. Right. Um, yeah, you would think this media phone, for example, would have at least a dock or something. Or maybe where you can do maybe via DLNA. I, I, yeah. Right. So. Uh, right. And actually, that is a capability of one of the Samsung phones. Right. right. So. Um, I just want to know if you get just DLNA. video. You know, Apple does this stupid thing where. Yep. The, yep. the application it's through the application using a, a, a OS yep. service, and the app has to support it. Instead of an right. OS level saying everything you see on this screen is going out that port, just blast out. Yeah, yeah. Apple obviously has their own custom rig for this because they use uh, they yeah. do video and they've never told things. anybody how to do it. Right. And we've so them. Microsoft probably is going to do the same thing, um, but yes, uh, through USB, it is possible. It's certainly possible. That, that's how they do it. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's over USB. Okay. Let us move along. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, chat room. Great to get those questions. I like doing that. We're going to try to do that every episode if we can. Um, before we uh, get to, well, we've got our Audible Pick of the Week, our Tip of the Week, our Software of the Week. But we always like to start with a bang, not a whimper. With the, <laughs> okay. With the IE9 feature wow. of the week. We might be winding down on this one. I was looking over the feature list. <laughs> I don't know how many more we have left. Okay, one more then. Um, but maybe one more after this, who knows, but you'll have to look again. But uh, yeah, so this week's uh, feature is the add-on Performance Advisor, and this is uh, takes the form of a uh, notification bar pop-up. Uh, you'll see it typically every single time you run Internet Explorer 9, unless you change something, because the default setting is that any add-on that causes the browser to not start up for, I think it's one second or less, will cause this thing to trigger. But I think the fun part about it, or the nice part is, when you when you click on that thing, you get this nice interface for choosing add-ons. Right there, you go, and it's got a visual graph of how long each one of these things oh, takes. I could, oh, I love this! So you can disable them right there on the fly, and it will tell you, you know. Oh, actually, I guess the default. Right, you can see it on your screen there. The default time is actually 0 0.2 seconds. Wow! So what I do is now that I'm thinking of it, as I I, I use the last pass add-on, which I find to be the most valuable. You bet. Software add-on of all. But right? it has if to go out to the net and decrypt and stuff. It takes more than 0.2 seconds. So it takes, sure. I think it takes less than a second, but it takes something. Yeah. So I have set my uh, minimum time to be one second. 
and then I don't now I don't see it. Excellent. Yeah, but this is a great feature, you know, and um, because it, it it puts it in the right context, right? IE has had a manage add-ons interface for a long time for the past two versions prior to this, but this shows you the impact of the add-ons on the performance of the browser, and a lot of the performance of IE, which is generally pretty poor, is because of all these add-ons. Right. And this gives you a way to, to see what's happening and a, and a way to... It's a problem in all browsers. It's what really made Firefox a pig. Because yeah. everybody was adding all these extensions to the dang... Yeah, and, and I would say, I, I disagree with this design, but Microsoft's decision with IE9 was... To, first, first of all, they haven't changed the add-on infrastructure at all. So uh, the add-on model is not changing in IE9. If you have IE add-ons in your current version of the browser and you upgrade to IE9, they all come across. There's no point in, in during setup where it says, hey, these are the add-ons you have. Are you sure you need all of these things? I actually think that might be part of it. But of course, Microsoft wants to keep things as simple as possible. So they do it this way instead. I would rather see no add-ons be installed when you run IE for the first time, personally. In fact, maybe that's the option. It should say, do you want your add-ons to be loaded? I think a lot of people would really appreciate starting over from scratch because... yeah. You get this real hit. These things, you know, they're, yeah. they're gunk. You know, they're just like the stuff that runs when your computer boots. Um, it, it, they collect over time. You don't even realize they're there in many cases. These things, you know, on my own, um, uh, the screenshot I have for this uh, feature, there are, every one of these things I did not explicitly install. There's a search helper from Microsoft. There's an Adobe PDF link helper, which obviously was installed with Reader. And then a Windows Live ID sign-in helper, which was installed with Windows Live Essentials, if I'm not mistaken. I never once explicitly said okay to any of those things, and they're all in my browser. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice to be able to turn them off. Yeah. This Lord, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to preempt our Audible Pick of the Week this week because I've got a word from Ford and the fine okay. Ford sink. You know, a funny thing happened to me on the way here. Now, this wouldn't be, I don't know, This you'd have to have the GPS screen, which is a, an additional thing in addition to sync. Did but that little robot try to kill you? He tried to shot at me. No. It's like the creature from, like, Trilogy of cute? Terror, except he's Isn't a robot. He cute? No, he's cute. I like him. <laughs> I like him. So, he's like um, the offspring of that, that robot from the football games on the Fox Network. I just thought this was a, a nice touch, and I don't know if other cars do this, but, um, you know... Uh, I know other cars do this. When you get down, I think, to, to a gallon or two left, it says, you know, the low 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 gas light comes on and it does a little bing. But then my GPS changed to show all the gas stations nearby. Oh, that's nice. And I'd never noticed that before. And then Did I filled say, it up and it turned it off. Feed nice. me. Feed me. This is the kind this is what I, this is the thought that Ford is putting into uh, yeah. the Ford Sync. And I just, it's little things like that. You know, you see that on a phone or you see it in a computer and you go, that's nice. You didn't have to do that. It's nice. So uh, let me tell you what Sync is. They, I think they also call it My Ford Touch now. That's the kind of rebranding of it. But the idea is it's true hands-free calling. I mean, really, you you know, the nowadays our cars are so smart and they do so much and your phone does so much. The temptation really is to reach for the phone, to look down at a screen. Ford has designed this so you keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel. You are driving safely but you still get to do all those things you want to do, like check the weather, check movie times, change the song, play pa Paul's podcast, that kind of thing. And, of course, make hands-free calls. So true hands-free calling, you, you know, there's a button on the steering wheel. You press that, and that's it. Uh, and everything is done by a speech. Turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions. Even if you don't get the bigger GPS package, which I have, you still have turn-by-turn -turn voice directions. 911 assist, which is great. That calls 911. You could turn this off, but if you but when you get in, so I'll get in and it and it pairs with my phone via Bluetooth. I've already paired it ahead of time. It says nine one one assist is on. Now you could turn that off, but what happens with it on? And I leave it on is if the airbags are deployed. In other words, if you get in an accident, it immediately calls nine one one using your phone, sends GPS coordinates to nine one one, so they know exactly where you are. Even though it's you know the regional nine one one, they're getting your precise location, uh, and then plays a recorded message and gives you and then opens the microphone and says you got anything to say help me uh i mean i just think for safety that's really great but there's also music search there's uh traffic alerts it knows your route so it will give you alerts ahead of time uh saying uh, you may not want to go this way audible text messages it will read you your text messages on on uh, compatible phones the android does work with the android phone i cannot wait to try windows mobile uh windows phone 7 in there uh, i imagine it will work because the underlying technology of course is microsoft car 
So I bet you it'll work. But Ford has added this entire UI layer on top of it and just really done a great job. Um, I, I just want you to try it. So I think the best thing to do, you can go to SyncMyRidePodcast.com. That's actually the site that I was showing with a little, the robot, the laser robot guy. Uh, and you can watch Sync in action there. And this is a great idea to see, just to see what Sync can do. But you can also uh, go to your local areas in this car. Look. Directions to Bigfoot books. <laughs> now, the robot doesn't actually happen. This is a uh, dramatization. <laughs> <That's> a <laughs> and it's actually much faster than this. I don't know this why they do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they do the robot thing. Because this is actually much slower. By now, I would have directions. <laughs> turn right in point four miles. Turn by turn navigation. Just one of the many voices. I'll play the, uh, the uh, let me see if I can find the uh, audible text messages. Is, is really cool. So you can, you know, I don't know. They don't, do they do the audio? Because it's really cool. Because this nice voice reads to you. That's the sound that you get, the Ford Sync. If you receive a text message on your mobile phone, you can have Sync read the message to you out loud with the touch of a button. Press OK once to receive the message and a second time to have it read it out loud. Stuck in a meeting. See you soon. Happy smiley. Sync. <laughs> no, it's really funny. <laughs> Happy smiley. Yes. What's really funny, my friends have caught on to the fact that I have this, and then they're now they're sending me filthy text messages, and the voice reads it, and it doesn't care. It just reads it, and it's pretty funny. Just one of the amazing things Ford Sync can do. <laughs> it really is great. I'm a big fan. I have it in my 2010 Mustang. If you haven't tried it, you can, of course, go to SyncMyRidePodcast.com or just go to your local Ford Lincoln or Mercury dealer and try the great My Ford Touch. It's just one of many reasons why I'm happy to be I'm very happy to be driving a Ford. My next car will be a Ford, I can promise you. In fact, my wife is saying, let's get rid of the Toyota. We bought it a year ago. Let's get rid of the Toyota. She wants the new Edge which is the most technologically sophisticated car I've ever seen. We'll talk about that another time. SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Thank you, Ford, for supporting Windows Weekly. And now, Paul Therott, mm -hmm. you, you can save that audible recommendation for another yep. day, will give us his Understood. tip of the week. So the tip this week is how to get ready for Windows Phone. You know? Yes, I'm so excited. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So I'll have a, I'm going to have an article about this, but I'll just give you the, the high-level view is. The first thing is uh, to have and, and really customize a Windows Live ID, right? Most of us already have such a thing. Some of us have multiple Windows Live IDs. Right. But Windows Phone uses Windows Live ID across the board, not just for, you know, your contacts and your calendar and your email, but also for the, the feed stuff that's going to appear in the People's Hub and also in the Pictures Hub for your Windows, I'm sorry, for your Xbox Live account, you know, for the games that you might want to play on the phone and for your Zoom stuff. So if you want to do uh, any of the music stuff that's built into the phone, including... Zoom Pass. Uh, one of the problems I have, and I still haven't rectified this, and I, I, I will do this by the weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared to death of it, but if you have multiple Windows Live accounts, if you have, you know, your Zoom Pass on one thing and your Xbox, you know, stuff on another, that kind of thing, you're going to need to consolidate them down. And um, I'll have some information about some of the some of the ways you can do that, or switch your, you know, if you want to switch your um, Windows Live ID from a non-live account to a live account because you want to take advantage of the, um, you know, Exchange Active Sync support for email and, con you know, and contacts and so forth. So uh, you need to do that stuff. There's some configuration stuff that you need to do on Windows Live. You, you need to go look at your profile, make sure that your privacy settings, for example, are set up the way you want them to be. You can do that at profile.live.com. You need to, you can import your contacts from other services. If you want the contacts to be on the phone and only go through that one account, um, you can do that. Do you recommend that as opposed to say, see, I'm all on Google, and, and I know the phone will work with Google. Is, right. it, is it better to integrate through live, you think? <sighs> no. Okay. Actually, no. In that case, it's not. So the, the problem, though, is this. Um, on, on a, you don't have to use a Windows Live account on Windows Phone. That's one of the right. things I, I like think a lot that. of people misunderstand. But... Yeah. It's way better if you do. Okay. So it's, it's worth... Better. And I've set up live. I mean, you, you know... I, well, I, and by the way, I don't mean it like you need to have your contacts in live. I mean, you just have to have a Windows Live account. Right. The, the problem with that initial Windows Live account is you, you'll, you can have multiple Windows Live accounts, by the way, on a phone. But only one can be attached to all of that stuff. Right. Subsequent accounts that you add, other Hotmail accounts or whatever, can have email, contacts, and calendar, or any combination of thereof. On the phone, but you can't have one account with your Xbox Live stuff and then a second live account that has your Zoom stuff. You, there's one master account. So it's important that that one is, 
you know, cleaned up in the way you want it to be and connected to those services that you want it to be connected to. So that's, that's the big thing. The problem with it is if you want to use Google uh, contacts as your main contacts database, you absolutely can do that on Windows Phone. The problem is your, that main Windows Live account, that stuff is coming over to the phone anyway. So if you don't want contacts from Windows Live, you got to get rid of those contacts. The problem is you may be using Windows Live Messenger like I am. So you're going to have some contacts. Now, Windows Phone will do some, will do actually a lot of contacts integration. So if I, if I have a, a Leo Laporte that's on Windows Live and I have a Leo Laporte that's on Gmail, and I configure both of those things for, uh, well, I configure both of those things, and I configure Gmail for contacts uh, access, you'll actually only have one entry in my, in my people. It merges them. It will merge them, but only on the phone, right? That's good. The thing, the thing that's interesting about that is um, if I go in and I add information or I change information, well, actually, I'll, I'll just say add information, that stuff gets added to Windows Live because, it can, because it's its own system, right? So in the future, uh, if I go and wipe out the phone and bring everything back or I don't bring everything back, that stuff that I change, or I should say add, not change, uh, is going to be on Windows Live, not on Google. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, if I change information that is stored on Google, obviously that will change Google. I mean, it will, it will work with, with other, whatever the underlying service is. It does work. Um, so you can import contacts if you want to do that. You can uh, add services so that you can access uh, online services that are not from Microsoft, like Facebook, Flickr, Pandora, um, you know, and, and things that are on um, uh, Microsoft services as well. And you do that through profile.live.com slash services. It's an important address to remember because this is where you set up the stuff. So if you want your Flickr photos to show up on the phone automatically, this is how you make that happen. You connect your Windows Live account to these third-party services. So that's an, that's an important thing. The other thing to remember is, uh, or to think about, is the types of accounts that you can set up on the phone and what they can do. I'm going to do this off the top of my head, so this might not be 100% of everything. You can, have a, you can and should have a primary Windows Live account. There's not a lot of configuration you can do for it. It's either it's on or it's off. It's going to do everything. So it's going to be all of that connected feed stuff, it's going to be contacts. It's going to be calendar, although that's the one thing you can turn off, by the way. And it's going to be email. You can have a secondary or many more Windows Live accounts, too, if you want. Those things will only be email, contacts, and or calendar. This is just, again, off the top of my head. But you can enable any of those however you want. Gmail works exactly like Exchange. So you can have any combination, again, of email, contacts, and calendar, Exchange, Email, context, calendar. Yahoo, I was told that Yahoo did context and, and email, but actually, I'll have to look at it on the final phone. In my experience, it's only been email, but possibly context. Beyond that, uh, it has uh, the ability to auto-recognize or you can manually configure other types of accounts, but they're all email accounts. So if you have an account at, you know, uh, myaccount.com or whatever, you can get email, but it's going to be over POP3 or IMAP, depending on what the support is on that uh, account. And that's it. You're not going to get the, you know, the contacts of the calendar. If you are going to use Xbox Live, uh, make sure that you have a gamer tag associated with your primary Windows Live account. If you have one associated with another account, you're going to want to move it over to your primary account, which you can do, by the way. And if you look at my mailbag um, articles on the site. Um, I have someone emailed me how to do that. And that's the process I'm going to be undergoing because my Xbox Live accounts with uh, almost 26,000, you know, points <laughs> is on my old Hotmail account. And I want to move it over to my oh, yeah. you don't want to lose that. new live account. So I'm nervous about this. Um, but I am going to do it. And I'll let you know how that goes. Um, also, the Zoom stuff, right? Uh, this, this is for purchases on the marketplace. We'll go through this account. Um, and th that includes applications and games, as well as music uh, that you may purchase uh, through the service. Or if you're on the PC, uh, TV shows, you know, movies, uh, mu music videos, you know, whatever other content they offer. Um, these things all have to go through your primary account. Let me see if I'm missing anything here. 
Yeah, and that's basically, that, that's most of it. I, I think the big part of this that's going to be different for people is the connecting of the services to your Windows Live account. But what that does is it enables you um, to access that information from the feeds, you know, that appear in the, in the contacts database of the people's hub or also in the, um, in the, in the pictures experience, which is, you know, shows you photos that you have on the phone, photos that are in your own online services, but also photos that other people are posting, say, to Facebook or Flickr or wherever. And it gives you a, a, a place not just to see those pictures, but also go and comment on them to jump into a thread where maybe people are commenting on a Facebook photo without going to Facebook. It works right in the interface, which is, you know, that, that advantage we talked about before. So I think that's the big thing and, or the big, uh, the big high level stuff. And like I said, I'm, uh, the first initial part of my review for Windows Phone, which will be up before the weekend, will address this in, in a bit more detail. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, that was a lot. I think if, if best we yeah. read the <laughs> read the article, but I get the idea. You want to do this? You want to go look at at least at your settings. The, the neat thing about this is now. it's like setting up an RSS feed. You kind of just do it once, right? And then it just works forever. So now you're done. When yeah. I turn on my phone and I when I go into the People Hub, I see all the Facebook updates that my people and that my my people <laughs> that my friends and family or whatever are making on Facebook and in other places. Uh, when I go into my Pictures Hub. I see the pictures that they're posting online, wherever they are, if they're on Windows Live, if they're on Flickr, if they're on Facebook or wherever. And you do that by properly configuring that Windows Live account. It's very important. Got it. Got it. Yep. Our software pick of the week. I guess really this one's pretty obvious too. <laughs> Perhaps. So this is the new version of the Zune software, the, the PC software. It's a minor update. Um, the previous release was actually, I think, 4.2, something like that. And it's akin to that release in, in that it's not a major new release of the software. It looks a lot like the previous version. It adds that international support, right, for the marketplace purchases and Zoom Pass and all that stuff. So if you're around the world and you just got access to that, uh, Zoom 4.7 is required for that. It adds support for Windows Phone, of course. So if you plug in a Windows Phone and, it, you know, the system's going to need drivers, it's going to get that from the Zoom software. Um, it you know, has some fit and finish stuff. There's... Um, the online services stuff we talked about, I was saying that one of the advantages to the Zune platform is the ability for you to always access any of the content that you purchase from Zune at any time in a streaming fashion. You don't have to download it. So one of the capabilities of Zune 4.7 is the ability to not just show you the... You actually go into TV shows or movies, and it will show you everything you've ever purchased. Um, but you can then, because you've bought it, you can stream that anytime you want um, from that... That, so this PC becomes one of the places to which you can do that. So uh, it works on the Xbox 360 with that new software update that's coming soon. It works on in Zoom uh, 4.7 on the PC. And, uh, and it will work on the devices as well. But so uh, you, if you, obviously if you're going to use Windows Phone, you need this. But if you're using Zoom at all, if you haven't used Zoom, 4.7 is the latest version. It's neat. And, you know, it's all the good stuff that was there before is there in the new version too, of course. All right. We, I, you know, I think it's maybe a little premature to do this, but you've got it on the list, so why not? Let's start doing it. And folks, just make notes of this. I don't think many of you, if any of you, have Windows Phone 7 yet. Well, uh, right. But see, here's what I'm going to do a little differently. Um, when I do a software pick of the week for a uh, normal software pick of the week, um, you know, I, I mention it on my uh, podcast page. Right. Uh, which is fine. You know, it's it. I sometimes I have to remember myself, you know, what's the name of that, you know, thing that converts you know, uh, playlists from iTunes to the Zoom. I don't remember the name of it, but I know it's on my pocket. I actually use it myself to go find things that I've recommended sometimes if I can't think of the name. Um, with Windows Phone, one of the things I intend to do is cover um, software, you know, explicitly. And so I want to do a software pick of the week. I figured that'd be the best way to do it. It will be games sometimes, it'll be apps. So I'm actually going to have a separate article for every Windows Phone app that I cover and it will include, if it's an Xbox Live game, I'm going to list all the achievements that are possible and, and stuff like that. So, you know, one of the very first games that became available for Windows Phone a couple of weeks ago now is this game called Flowers with a Z on the end. And it's one of those, you know, th three, four, five, you know, flowers of the same color in a row kind of puzzle type games or whatever. And um, it's, you know, it's as bejeweled. 
is what you're saying. It is a lot like Bejeweled, although actually Bejeweled is also available on, on oh, Windows Phone. Neat. But it, it's the one early game that I've really locked, locked on to. I actually, it's um, my children and my wife have both made fun of me for playing a game that has flowers in it. And um, I actually, I find it quite addictive. And it, it's a nice thing because of the way Windows Phone works, you can... You know, you can play it for a little while and then drop it and come back and just resumes, you know, picks up where it left where it left off and uh, you can just keep going and you know there's only one thing missing. It needs zombies. It does. Well there's by the way, there's an awesome zombie uh, zombies game coming okay. too and I'll okay. I'll talk about that in the future, but um, You may not get angry but, birds, but at least you'll get zombies. Well, you will get Angry Birds, too, by the way. There's a story behind that. Do you know what the is story the story behind, behind that? So uh, just for people who don't know, Rovio, which makes Angry Birds yeah. for iPhone and Android, was a little upset because in the Microsoft marketing materials, there was an Angry Birds icon. And, right. and they so, tweeted, but, well, we're not doing it for Windows Phone 7 necessarily. Well, that's not exactly. Okay. So they, you're right. What had happened was, obviously, before Windows Phone goes live, Microsoft is preparing graphics elements for the web page and they want to do something right. that highlights apps and games and you know one of the graphics they had someone create was that graphic that had angry birds and all these other icons but when they first created the graphic the people who created it who don't work for microsoft didn't know what games would be available right so they used iphone and android icons to represent the images and then they replaced them with actual games late in the game eh, pardon the pun and they, it was just a mistake. They left that one in by mistake. It wasn't uh, a weird little attempt by Microsoft to goad them into, you know. The thing that kind of stinks about it is that Microsoft, of course, is talking to this company, and they are talking about doing a version of Angry Birds for Windows Phone. It's almost certain that this game will appear, but Microsoft didn't. It was just a mistake. <laughs> they just, it wasn't and It a, wasn't even Microsoft's mistake. Well, I mean, Microsoft was the one who ultimately put it on their site. I mean, so, yeah, it was Microsoft's mistake, okay. but... The, you know, it wasn't done to go to anybody or to try to, it, like, like they were on the fence and this will put them over the top because now people will expect it. I mean, it literally was just a mistake. And uh, the expectation actually is that that game will, in fact, appear on Windows Phone. So, oh, good. Um, hopefully that does happen. Because, as you know, Angry Birds is arguably the greatest portable <laughs> game ever. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I would love, I certainly, I would love to see it. So, well, Paul, we've come to the end of this fine episode. As we must. It always happens. Somehow every <laughs> every week we come to the end. I I guess yeah. it wouldn't be good if we didn't. Uh, you can find more of what Paul's been talking about, uh, including at some point his uh, his setup guide for window, new Windows Phone users. And sometime in the next week, his review of Windows Phone 7 at, at SuperSite for Windows. That's winsupersite.com. He also writes for Windows IT Pro. He's got a blog there. And uh, his book, Windows Phone 7, is going to be out before the phone. That means like soon, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Hopefully by the end of the month, yeah. So get the, get the book for crying out loud. Pre-order on Amazon. Windows Especially to phone. get the focus because the focus is so small and light that you could afford the extra weight and half of the book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because otherwise it wouldn't feel like you were carrying anything. But there's no truth to the rumor that the book comes with a copy, with a focus. No, <laughs> I wish it did. That would be. Ah, wouldn't mean they sell a lot of books that way. Actually, yeah. they when you buy the Focus, they should bundle the book. Is what they should do. I couldn't agree with you more, yeah. sir. I yeah. wish that was the case. So. From our lips to uh, Ralph de la Vega's ears. By the way, uh, there's a, a famous character actor who's probably Mexican or at least Central American. Who he was the bad guy in one of those um, Harrison Ford movies. You know, yeah. clear, clear and present danger. With the one where they go down to South America. Uh huh. I don't know. He looks exactly like the CEO of <laughs> AT and T Mobility. He looks exactly like that guy. I, I just, it's it's it, as soon as he stepped on stage, I was like, "That's that guy from Clear and Present Danger." That's pretty funny. That <laughs> yeah, is pretty he funny. Looks, looks just like that guy. Paul, we uh, we are running out of time. I guess I already said that. Uh, we have now run out of time. So uh, Windows Phone Seven Secrets, get it. You can watch this show. I mentioned it. Eleven a.m. Pacific, two p.m. Eastern every Thursday. Live.twit.tv, eighteen hundred UTC. Or then download audio or video so you can always watch it after the fact at twit.tv. Watch it on your new Windows phone. WW. Yes, you can. Uh, Dimitri, uh, Le I, Le I never know how to say his name. Lee Allen is doing the... By the time Windows yeah. phone is out, it will be there will be a Twit app for that. That's beautiful. Nice. I mean, you've seen it, right? Yes. Yeah. Love it. It's really nice. Love it. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. All right. I got to go kill some Taliban, but <laughs> go, it was good talking to you. Go hit those Taliban. <laughs>
Hit them where it hurts. <laughs>